Hello everyone, welcome back to I Explain. Today, we'll be analyzing the Swedish film Force Majeure. The film exposes a few disturbing realities about human nature. Pay close attention, you'll learn some of your deepest instinctive behaviors. A family spends five days on vacation in the French Alps. When a tourist photographer insists on taking pictures of the family, they hesitate a little but start giving poses as the photographer instructs them. They come back to the hotel because the little guy needs to pee. At the counter, the wife, Ebba, meets a woman. She discovers that the woman frequently visits this location by herself. The family gets back to skiing in the breathtaking French Alps. Ebba visits a local studio to print the images, and she is thrilled to see the adorable faces of her children. She speaks to the studio assistant about the photographer's skill before abruptly stopping to look at the picture with her spouse, Thomas. Thomas struggles with the youngster on the walk back to the hotel. Ebba claims that the boy is acting this way because he is exhausted and hungry. After a restful night's sleep, the family wakes up early in the morning and brushes their teeth. They visit a cafe with a sweeping view of the Alps for breakfast. Everything was nice and perfect until they saw an avalanche. When everyone gets a little scared, Thomas tells them it is a controlled avalanche, he took off his phone and started recording, but as the avalanche came closer and hit the restaurant, out of instinct, he began running for his life, leaving his wife and children behind. After a while, they found out it was only a controlled avalanche. Thomas enters the restaurant embarrassed and he sits at the table uncomfortably. The shock looms over the table of Ebba's family while everyone else settles down, relieved. The children can't believe their father abandoned them, and Ebba can't believe her devoted husband fled from a circumstance when he ought to have set a good example for the children. After arriving back at the hotel, she forces the kids into the room so she may speak with Thomas about what just happened. When Ebba asks Thomas for an explanation, he responds that nothing substantial has happened that they can discuss. Ebba agrees with Thomas and thinks that she will soon forget the incident and life will resume as normal. She returns to the kids and attempts to engage them in conversations. As soon as she insisted on discussing what happened, they became agitated and urged their parents to leave the room. They got out and tried to listen to what the kids were saying. Thomas started laughing at the childish acts of his kids, Ebba stopped him and tried to tell him something, but she couldn't. The family spends some time flying a drone from the hotel balcony before heading to bed. After the kids are asleep, the couple goes to dinner with the women Ebba met earlier. The woman also brought her new boyfriend, whom she had just met this morning at the lift queue. To set his class at the dinner table, Thomas shakes the wine, smells, and tastes it. He approves the wine for their table and asks the couple about their day. The woman describes their wonderful day and mentions that her new boyfriend is a devout Christian. The man, however, disagrees and claims he is not that religious, he is just not an atheist. Thomas and Ebba got into an awkward position when the women asked about their day. Thomas somehow gathered himself and started telling them about their earlier avalanche experience. But he skipped the awkward part where he ran off. But suddenly interrupting in the middle, Ebba shared how Thomas had been frightened and had impulsively fled. He began strongly disagreeing with Ebba's version of the event. Due to the wine, Ebba became a bit drunk. Ignoring the discomfort, she began disputing with Thomas in an effort to get the truth. However, a birthday party behind their table saved them from the embarrassment. After the awful dinner, Ebba admits that she wasn't herself at that time. They gave themselves a long hug and agrees to a mutual version of the story, which is, they experienced an avalanche and were frightened but everything was okay in the end. The following day, Ebba decided to go skiing by herself. When Thomas gave his credit card to her, she declined and stated she would use her own. Even though she assured Thomas that everything would be well and continue to be the same as before, she is still having trouble accepting the fact. She tried to ski it off. Meanwhile, a friend of Thomas and his young girlfriend come to join them at the hotel. After skiing, Ebba talks with the woman again. After chit-chatting for a while she learns that the woman perceives a moderate view of life, this time she got herself an Italian man for pleasure. The woman tells Ebba that her husband does the same and she is totally fine with it. In the evening the friend and his young girlfriend come for dinner. Even though she moved about and grinned uncomfortably the entire time, Ebba attempted to appear normal. They continue to sip wine after dinner and chat about their stays at the hotel. Thomas feels a little uneasy with Ebba's expression. She might start telling the story again anytime, and guess what, she does. She briefly explained the chaos the event had created. The friend and the young girl cannot believe that Thomas ran away and abandoned his family. Thomas was stunned and didn't utter a single word. Ebba describes how it's impacting her mental state. While being in a luxurious hotel, she cannot find mental tranquility. Everyone suddenly fell silent. Thomas was unable to respond when Ebba requested him to break the silence. Instead, the buddy started chatting and tried to persuade Ebba to see this positively. He explains, although humans could act instinctively to survive in these types of circumstances, it wouldn't be wise to criticize them for their actions. Ebba agrees with the buddy and understands him, 
but she expressed disappointment that Thomas refused to acknowledge the irresponsibility of his actions. The drone suddenly strikes them, cutting off the conversation. Thomas exits the room with the drone, Ebba follows. The pair started laughing at each other. They aren't sure if they need to depart right now or stick around and attempt to make things right between these two. The friend has tried a few treatments and wellness courses before, and he views this situation as a great chance to share what he has learned. He claims in his speech that while we are accustomed to the image of heroes from movies, literature, and other media, the reality is much different. Thomas gets up and rejoins them after overhearing their chat from the adjacent room. He asserts once more that his interpretation of the incident differs from Ebba's. The young girl anticipated a conflict and moved to Ebba's side. For the friend, things simply grew more fascinating as he sat back to focus on what Thomas had to say. When Thomas just started thinking that he got her cornered, Ebba remembers that the footage is still on the phone. She stood up and bring the phone to watch the whole incident altogether. Thomas started admitting that the incident was scary and the most important thing is that they all are okay now, there is no need to make a big deal out of it, but Ebba insists on watching it. They all concurred after closely examining the footage that Thomas ran away and left his children behind. But the buddy made an effort to comfort him by saying that he probably fled because he had to get himself out of danger in order to pull them out from beneath the snow. The atmosphere didn't much shift, though. Everyone was in bed when the couple left, but Thomas was unable to fall asleep. He sobbed the entire night because of his embarrassment and remorse. On the way back to their room the couple argues about how they would do in such situations. They fight till late at night over the issue. The following morning, Thomas and his friend go out skiing. As they were riding in the cable car, Thomas wears his spectacles and made an excuse that it was too bright outside. They came down from the cable car and climbed to the top of the mountain. The weather and the thickness of the snow are ideal for skiing. When the buddy stops and calls out to Thomas, he starts skiing as well. They ski for a while and rides down the mountain, and climb to the top to start again. Thomas doesn't want to ski anymore, he wants to speak instead. Buddy persuades Thomas to scream by telling him that screaming is a physical exercise, it will relieve your anger. Thomas screamed his gut out. When they come down for beers, a girl comes down to Thomas and tells him that he is the most good-looking guy in here. It added extra delights to their drinks. Then they partied till late at night. When Thomas gets back to the hotel room he tried to have sex thinking it might cool off things between them, but he finds Ebba in the same shock after the sex. He screams alone in the bathroom. Before going to bed they go outside the room to talk, but Thomas only managed to act like crying. When Ebba complains that he is faking it, we see a flat face and no signs of crying. Then he starts to explain the guy inside him, the guy he also hates. He is having a hard time dealing with himself as well. Thomas began to shed sincere tears. He sobbed uncontrollably, but it doesn't seem like Ebba's perspective was significantly altered. He was heard by the children inside. Thomas and Ebba enter the room. He breaks down again in tears. The kids are shocked and started crying with their father. They also force their mother to help Thomas. The final day of skiing. Despite the rough weather and poor visibility, they nevertheless made the decision to go skiing. They create a line to begin skiing, with Thomas going first, followed by the children, then Ebba at the tail end. After some time spent skiing, they realize Ebba was absent. Thomas call out for Ebba and after a few minutes, they heard Ebba screaming for help. Thomas told the kids to stay where they were until he rescue and brings back their mother. The youngsters are excitedly and fearfully waiting. Thomas gets back with their mother. They reconciled and Thomas told his kids, we made it. They are leaving the hotel for home, and the kids are looking charged up. On the mountain road, the bus driver took a few rough turns. Ebba stood up and told the driver to drive more carefully, but the driver didn't listen to her and the bus dangerously bumped again. She got up from her seat and tells the driver to open the door. She gets off the bus alone. Everyone started screaming and tried to follow Ebba. The buddy told them to get off the bus in a civilized way. All the passengers got off the bus except the sporty woman. All the tourists started walking. A fellow tourist offers Thomas a cigarette, he lights it up for him. Hopefully, everything will be okay in their lives despite the deep discoveries they had on this tour.